Greetings kings and queens and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. It's your girl Shars. If you're new, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back. On this platform, I share hair care, lifestyle and so much more. So guys, who's ready for story time? Story time, story time. <laughs> Alright guys, this story time that I'm going to share with you uh, happened many, many, many years ago when I was in primary school. For those of you who are new, by the way, I'm from the beautiful island of Dominica, Commonwealth of Dominica, but I live in the beautiful island of Antigua. On a beautiful Wednesday afternoon, school was over at 4 p.m. and myself along with just friends and so forth. I mean, at the end of the day, our school, we have two separate, like, where I'm from back in Dominica is on the north side. Uh, we call it Penville. Yes, and um, there is an upper Penville and there is a lower Penville. I know, it's, it might be kind of confusing for those of you who are like... But anyway, just try to follow. Just, just try to keep up with the story time. Alright? So guys, like I was saying, there is an upper and there is a lower. I am from the lower part of the village and there is an upper part um there is nothing different really guys it's just that it's just a name so it's not like middle and lower class there is nothing like that i have just always known it for being upper penville and lower penville so i attended upper penville primary school but i live at the lower penville right okay so i like i said school over at 4 p.m every day so myself and you know the other villagers and you know just a whole bunch of us we proceeded on leaving school believe you me like leaving school for us is like one of the best times especially if it's raining i mean for those of you who are, who's on here and you guys know where i'm coming from like when it's raining and you get to walk in the rain and you know you walk through the rivers and all of that those were some good old days like comment down below if you know what i'm talking about yeah we proceeded on walking down there are times that you know we will like get a lift a ride but the majority of the times is like we just walk yes and i'm telling you it's it, it's it's quite a bit of walking yeah so yeah we left school and we just headed home while having lots of fun and with that fun we always have some sort of um challenge it, it guys it, it was just always a competition but just like it was like it was very friendly you know there was no grudges anything like that there is this girl i'm gonna call her say angie so myself angie and a group of friends we proceeded on saying like who can reach this mango tree faster so i was like i was all in you know i mean hey it's fun and at the end of the day like i said it's a lot of walking so therefore with having fun while doing all this walking and running and walking and jogging and all of that it just brought us to our destination in a blink of an eye so we proceeded on running right of course you know there's always this person that's like on your mark but we're like you know you, you you stand at the back of the line we'd use probably like chalk or something and everybody's at the back of the line and we're like on your mark ready steady let's go and guys we would both believe you me at that time i thought that i was like the fastest one alive guys trust me i wasn't that fast but in my mind you know i was like lightning you get what i'm saying so we started running we started running and i was running because i'm like i am gonna win this challenge today and no matter what i'm gonna read i'm gonna i'm just gonna get to that point guys the last thing i remember is i saw a leg in front of me like i don't know guys and the last thing i remembered is i'm getting up and dusting off myself ready to take on that same challenge that, that literally got me on the ground and at the time guys our roads were being resurfaced you know getting the roads back to being smooth and all of that so 
we had gravels on the road. Just think of you falling on gravels at a fast pace that could literally cause a lot of damage, which it did. <sighs> I mean, a little falling gonna kill nobody. I thought I was all good. Then I heard all my friends and everybody was like, Sha, Sha, look at your knee. Look at what Angie did to your knee. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. Nothing is wrong. I just kept on dusting off my uniform, you know, my elbows and all of that, you know. I kept on saying and I saw the horror on everybody's faces. But while, while looking at everybody's expressions, y'all, I was like, but why? You know, like everything start happening in slow-mo at this point. I was like, but why are they looking so grossed out? Why are they looking so horrified? That's what's going through my mind, yeah? So I listened and I pull up my uniform, which our uniform was like a jumper, green, and like a dress shirt, and then the jumper goes over. So I, you know, I remember lifting up my, um, my uniform like so, and I took a peep and looked down. And all I saw was just a little trickle of blood, you know, nothing exaggerating about it. So I was like, oh, I just got a little scratch. That's just nothing. And one of my neighbors from my village, which is Lower Penville, they're like, no, look at your knee. I was like, nothing is wrong. I just got a little scrap. Let's go, let's go. They're like, no, look at your knee. And he literally like, like he just stood up in front of me and like look at your knee so i did i was like okay okay and everybody was just like staring like oh my god i saw some people hands on their head i saw some people like, oh. i saw some people like oh my god oh my god i was like but what you, what's wrong with you all it's just a little script there's nothing to worry about i'm good so when after my friend which was my neighbor a few of my neighbors they're like, no, look at your knee. Guys, when I took that third look, I literally like push out my knee, you know, and I lift my uniform and I look down. Guys, all I saw at this point was white, but it looked like bone. At this point, I don't need to gross anybody out. I'm not gonna show any photos, not that I have any, thank God, because I don't want to relieve, relieve it. I mean, at the end of the day, it will always be embedded in my memory, but it has gotten better that I can talk about it. So I hope I'm not grossing anybody out at this point. Yeah, okay? When I looked, guys, it resembled bones, like, you know, like when you're going to school and they're showing you skeleton and the joints and all of that, that is what I saw. So when I saw that, I froze. Literally, I froze. And I was like, what is that? Honestly, guys, I didn't cry. And after everything transpired, I was told that I was in total shock because I didn't share one tear yeah i'll tell you when i shared that tale i'm gonna tell you we're, we're getting to that so please continue to watch and if you're not yet subscribed please go ahead and press that subscribe button okay guys on the road to 2000 3000 6000 and i can go on and on okay so please show your girl some love press that like button leave your positive comments down below yeah and continue to watch please tell a friend to tell a friend okay Let's get back to the story. <laughs> this was just commercial. All right, guys. And I was like, I was at this point, everything stopped. I literally could not hear. Uh, I, I could, the noise, the yelling, look at your knee, the people's expressions, all of that went nada. Like, I wasn't focusing on anybody's expression, facial expression at this point. I could hear nothing, I could see nothing else, then I was just solely focused on what actually just happened to me. And I was trying to comprehend 
what what did I just saw? Like, guys. Yeah, mom, I'm sorry to bring back these memories to you, but you know, I'm trying to open up to my fam's here. I was telling my daughter about that and she's like, mom, why don't you share it with your Shaz fam? I think it's somewhat interesting. So I was like, why not? Sure, I mean, it's my life, you know? So here I am. <laughs> and I was just trying to comprehend. I was just trying to grasp what is going on at this point. And I was like, okay. The last thing I remember doing was dropping my backpack. And I was like, I just started running. When I looked and they were like trying to stop me and like tell me don't run um, I, that's what i started guys i just wanted to get home to my parents at this point because i'm like i don't know what's happening am i in a dream am i going crazy was that just my kneecap that i saw was looking back at me at this point i was going loco cabeza i was just going like am i going crazy at this point i was like wait Makali fall a I was like, what I meant by that is, am I going crazy or what? Yeah? And I was like, wait. Help me. I started running, guys. And for those of you who are from Dominica, yeah, and you all know that story, please comment down below. Tell me what you all remember about this, this particular day. Yeah? Also, I remember it happened. There is this community they call, um, I think it's... After you pass there, Galba, I don't know the English name, guys. Remember, I'm from Dominica and we do have two languages, which is like Patois and English. So there are a lot of things that I don't know the English name too. Yeah, so please forgive me. But the, the, the village name, there is a village name before I get to my village, which was, it's called De Galba. And after you pass there, Galba, there is this, um, how do they call it? I can't recall. Oh my gosh. I've been away from Dominica for too long. <laughs> oh wow. Ah, oh, what? What is it called? What is it called? Ah, oh, let me call. You know what? Let me let me call my mom or someone and ask them what is that play? Live live here. Yeah. No, it's not live here, yeah. so let's ah, let me call my mom and find out, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm back. I actually tried reaching my mom. I didn't get a hold of her because my I, I got my sis though and my sister told me that she's in bed actually because at this time it is actually uh 10 30 p.m that i'm recording this you know you gotta do what you gotta do so yes thank you my sis thank you for reminding me so guys where all this lovely incident happened was live your lord ball yes live your lord ball which what it means is um, like like Penville River. There is a river that we 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 cross. How you call it? Like a bridge, and the river goes underneath. So they call it like Penville River, which is like Livie River is Livie, Lodbo is Penville. I started running. It took a while to get home. There is this huge hill that I would have to conquer. And then there is this other big one that I would have to go down and reach all the way down almost to the dead end to the like, that is where my childhood home was and still is. I started running and I was like, I just remember pushing every, like pushing them out my way because they were trying to tell me, don't run on my knee, don't run. And I was like, at this point, I'm in shock. I can't cry. I don't know what I'm feeling. I, 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 I don't know what... I don't, I don't know what's going on. I was like, I just need to get home to my parents. So I started running and even fling a kick, a few <laughs> kicks at some of my <laughs> friends with that same injured leg. Guys, when you're in shock, you never know how you would react in a situation. I actually like, I was like trying to like just, I wasn't really intentionally trying to keep them because that was not Cool, thinking about it now not even animals you don't do that but at that point guys I was like flinging some kicks left right and center I was like get out my way I need to go home I need to get home to my parents and I remember running and then I dropped my bag plug in like I said and I proceeded on running but I held my uniform at this point because when I looked down at that knee at that leg guys 
the amount of blood it started gushing again i'm so sorry if i'm yeah if you have a sensitive stomach trust and believe it's gonna get better but i just need to draw the entire picture so you get where i'm coming from okay i just continue running i crossed that bridge and i kept on running and there was this cistern this big how you call it, like a rectangle rectangle shape uh where like they 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 kept like you know fresh river water to like you know distribute to the entire communities and stuff like that it was like straight from the the mountains and so forth guys it is so good and it was so cold and fresh we like when we would leave school in the afternoon times and if you're thirsty you just stop right there and just put your hands oh those are good old days like no we everybody have to buy water like what is this world turning into but the world is still a beautiful place don't get me wrong you know it's just yeah i stopped there was this um this place we call it the copper house the copper is like um where that place belonged to my to my godfather um yeah so my godfather he he owned that building where they dried coconut in the shell is like the best tasting coconut you'll ever eat in your entire life i guarantee you it was like dried or like in 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 a, in a brick house with just fire blazing from every point every angle but when it comes out guys it like it's cooked it's smoky it's just Oh, it's just delicious. I gave you that location um, because uh, the cistern with the water, the copper house was like a few meters or something away from that. I stopped at the cistern because like there was this tap that would just gush out the water and I took some water in my hand and I wash in the excess blood that was you know just traveling down my leg at this point because um i was almost um at my village and i know once you know persons would see that i'm bleeding you know they would really try to stop me and figure out what the what's the issue because guys dominica is one of the most like cultural um country i know everywhere have it but dominica it was like everybody looks looked out for each other so i know you know if they saw my condition and saw the blood they would try to help me and stop me and i didn't want to be stopped at this point because i started feeling some pains and i know once i stopped the crowd and the attention and I remember starting feeling nervous at this point because like the the shock of everything started wearing out because I could literally feel you know like a slight pain coming like it's creeping in I was like you know what I can't be stopped the best thing at this point for me to do is get rid of the evidence that just just get rid of the evidence wash out that blood and just proceed on running pray to goodness that it doesn't gush out as much so when I get home I get home yeah so that was and at the time guys my mom was a stay-at-home mom so i know my mom would have been home i'm not sure of my dad but i know for sure my mom would have been home my dad would work Whew. i got rid of the evidence to the best of my abilities and i started running again so i went up all the way up to that hill i passed the, my, my my godfather's um, business i passed his home I passed the bakery at the time, which was on my right hand side, and I started running down that hill, guys. And I'm I'm not talking about jogging, you know. I'm running, I'm running for my life. Because I just want to get home to my parents. I just need to get home so they could take care of me. Because I don't know what's going on at this point, right? So I started running, and then there was this man. Uh, this elderly uh, man from my village, he was like, Put your kaku we can sa. Like, why are you running so? And he was like, Saki fell, meaning, What is wrong with you? And I was like, Nothing. Yeah, I was like, Nothing is wrong with me. So he was like, Oh, oh, fell. What he said is, 
you're saying nothing is wrong with you, nothing happened to you. But moi ka vwe ni san asi asi pie ou, asi jounou ou 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 ni an coupé. So he was like you're saying nothing happened to you, but I could clearly see you have blood coming from your knee. Are you hurt? Did you get a cut? Are you okay? I still proceeded in English and said, yes, I am. And I continue running while he's talking. I ain't stopping you guys. At that time, I started jogging, you know, because you have to show your elders respect. Yes, yes. So I was like, no, sir, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm just trying to get home. So I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I started running now. And I ran and I ran. And I was like, there was this, this, this shop at this time where all the young guys would sit in the afternoons like the farmers and stuff and chill there are like a few of them though there was one two before i get home one two three at the time or two something like that and they're like sha what happened to you you good you good i was like yeah good i good and i i proceeded guys and I'm, i could see my home at this point because i'm heading down to that hefty hill yeah so i started even running faster because i start feeling my leg at this point is getting numb i started feeling like if i stop i'm gonna drop if i slow down i'm gonna drop so i was like i'm not gonna drop no one is gonna tell my mom that i fell and i know my mom guys she my mom takes things like oh my god like so i could not allow that to happen i would rather her see it from me first so i ran i ran i ran i ran i ran all my life i had to fight <laughs> anyways hey so i'm finally home y'all so when i got home i was a real troublesome child in a good way though in a good way my mom and i would have like the best times i could recall where i would just nag my mom just nag her she would get upset but at the same time i could see like oh she liked it she liked it so when i got home i was like mommy <laughs> mommy she was like i'm in the kitchen what 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 you want <laughs> are you okay i say yes mom i'm good mommy at this time at this point i can't really move as much because the pain the pain start lick me down it start the pain start hit me guys so i couldn't run anymore so i started limping yeah i started limping and i go to the back by the kitchen area and i was like mommy she was like whoa yo yo <laughs> meaning like oh my god what is wrong with you child you just got home and you're already getting started what's wrong and she proceeded on opening the bed she said i just baking some bread and you don't start already you know <laughs> so i was like she's like what's wrong you are you okay so when she opened the door i said mommy look at what angie did to me <laughs> and i lift my uniform up guys i think it's angie i think that's the name i started off with right if it's not hey you know that's that's the thing yeah when you lie you have to make more lies to cover lies like it's not the right person name i'm not gonna use the right person's name but i think i made up a name that i can't even remember at this point <laughs> lord of mercy anyway yeah so it's like look at what angie did to me guys all i saw my mom fainted when she saw the condition of my knee and when my mom dropped down i no before she fell she let out a scream that i've never heard my mom and i pray to god i never hear that terrified scream never in my life she let go that scream guys and she dropped so when she dropped, I started screaming. I wasn't worried about myself at this point. I was worried about my mom because my mom just dropped. What is wrong? Is my mom okay? I, I don't even care what is wrong with my knee. Uh, where we live, my grandmother is like, is like the entire family setting kind of hall. Everybody has their own area. When my 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 grandma my aunties my uncles my cousins and the other um, neighbors 
heard that scream and I started screaming, mommy, 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 mommy. I can't go towards my mom to see if she's okay because at this point, my knee is completely, my leg is completely numb, but I am feeling numb to the point that I can't walk, but I am feeling so much pain. The pain at this point was excruciating pain that it, guys, it was so unbearable, but at the time, I was feeling it but I was detached to that pain because no my concern was the well-being of my mom and then I saw my grandma my grandma was like wait so okay Saka, Esley, Charlotte wait and she started and my, my my uncles and everybody they came they rushed to my mom and you know they attended to her and stuff but um, my grandma went to my mom check and she she's all right they got rubbing alcohol water and everything gave her she drank and they put a sato but then someone i think my uncle i don't remember who and other people of the community they were attending to me whilst others were attending to my mom right so guys when my grandma approached may god rest her soul we yes we lost her during covid times guys I think I'm gonna put a picture right here. Mama you you yes. What a sassy lady. <laughs> what a sassy handful lady. I loved her though. I yeah. <sighs> Anyways, let's not even go there. She approached me and she saw the condition of my knee. My grandma put her hands on her head and started shouting, shouting, so cool, so cool. For those of you who are Dominicans, <laughs> you all know what that means. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, Jesus. It means all of that. Like, it's terrifying. So once you hear somebody screaming, you know, yet letting that out, you know it's something terrible. And she started screaming. Her hands went on her head. My, my, my dad wasn't at home at the point and at that time and my brothers, cause I had two brothers at home, but my two sisters were overseas at the time, but my two brothers, they worked with my dad. So they were still at work at this point. Everything just became blurry. Like it's a blur cause I, I was losing a lot of blood. What I remember is they tied, they put some sort of pressure on my knee and tied it. And then they, I remember being lifted and uh, my neighbor um, pickup came, pull up in our driveway and they lifted me up along with my mom. At this point, my mom came, I guess she came back to her senses. Uh, my mom was baking you all, my mom was baking bread. And I remember my mom went to the hospital with her, um, with her apron full of dough, like flour, all her hands has flour, everything. She, I don't know if she turned off the oven or what the case, I don't remember. But I remembered uh, we driving at the hospital and my mom was like petting me and asking me if I'm okay, keep talking to her if I'm okay. But at this point, the pain, the pain had me real good, real good, y'all. Um, so I remember saying, yes, mommy, I'm good, I'm good. And then even um, our neighbor, the driver, he was like, Sha, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Just be strong. You're going to be okay. Guys, Dominica is huge. For those of you who don't, who's not aware, we actually have two tongues, which is um, Roseau, which is I mean, the capital, and Portsmouth, which is the second tongue, right? But back in the day, there was no health center or anything like that in my village. So we proceeded on heading down to Vilcaz um, the, at that time, because I mean, our school over at four, uh, everything I think the health center was already closed, but I think my, my godmother, one of my godmothers was um, a nurse. So um, my, I remember they rushing me at her home because at that point the health center was closed so there was nothing that could have been done for me but I needed to be attended to attended to because uh, like they needed to get that blood under control but guys at this point I was like bawling I was yeah the girl was in severe pain all over the place crying screaming the nurse told my mom there that she, oh, that's all she could do for me is try to just you know prevent any bacteria you know so she washed it off and banded it off and tell me um i would have to go to Portsmouth. And, um guys from Portsmouth hospital 
they looked at it again they cleaned it i think there was no doctor on hand or something like something to that effect so they sent me to the to the capital to like rule so so you'd know it was a terrible incident i think i got 36 stitches and it happened on my my knee okay i'm gonna show you guys as you also in the thumbnail but i'll definitely show you guys and um i remember i was being rushed to another hospital again but before i was rushed to the other hospital i remember getting some injections i don't know for whatever reason remember i was just 11 or something 11 years of age i i can't remember i i mean i look 16 but trust and believe i'm not okay <laughs> whenever i visit dominica i would probably ask my mom i'm not sure if she is gonna say yes or no because my mom is not like a camera person i don't know but i could probably do like a second part if she agrees on what she remembered and all of that i remember when i got to the main hospital they rushed me in and the doctor when he looked at my knee I remember the expression on his face I, I could never forget and he was like could you could you feel your leg could you move your toes for me I was like yes doctor and I wiggled my toes and he was like okay good that's a good sign that's a good sign because he was and come later on I really understood why he asked if I could Feel my leg if I could wiggle my toes we're gonna get into that very soon they got me prepped for um, stitches and um, the nurses the doctors I remember all the equipments and guys the injections back to back because while they were stitching me I could literally feel it it wasn't getting numb fast enough so they had to be like give me like the injections in in the injury you know you, you know how that go you know, so I got a few of them until I couldn't feel anything anymore, thank goodness. But I remember crying and holding on and my mom was just there with me. And they allowed my mom on the bed and my mom held me and was just speaking good things in my ears. And I remember we both were crying at this point. And she was just ensuring me that everything is going to be okay, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, I'll be fine. And I believed, I believed my mom, yes. So um, after I was stitched up and everything, I was sent home, but that was like the morning, the next, I think it was the like late, because guys, Roseau is not like, it, it's a far distance back and forth. So I believe time I got home, it was very, very late, you know? So um, when I got home, people didn't, people wasn't aware of me being back home. It was the next, the following day, like our home was like, the hospital everybody came brought something guys like i said that was just the the the, the village the dominica that i remember you know everybody came you know they just came looking for me asking how i was doing you know and so forth and everybody brought something and it was a it was it, it was a lot but it, it felt so good you know knowing that you know you you're, you're so loved you know um so I remember with all the stitches, I after that I got my lollipop. You can't talk to me. I got my lollipop from my doctor, and my doctor said I did pretty pretty well. In spite of that situation, it was a terrible terrible situation that happened that I was in. But he was like, "You did a very good job." So um, I could get my lollipop, and I was so happy to get my lollipop. You can't talk to me don't talk to me i got my lollipop and that made me feel i felt so much better <laughs> i felt so much better yes so um i remember um after you know all of that was done the doctor sat my mom down i was right there as well and they were just talking and the doctor was like telling my mom that he he is he was so happy that this this thing didn't happen like a few inches higher up to my kneecap because if it did based on the severity of the injury i could have lost mobility permanently to my left leg completely guys so you see how things can happen that can just change our lives for the good and even the bad so 
oh wow so yeah he was like he is so happy that injury happened a, a little lower down a few inches from my kneecap kneecap but was still at my kneecap but if it happened higher up he was like if it was like a few inches higher and the gravels like cut in it could have actually cracked that kneecap and severed some some words he used at that time guy and i could have been paralyzed on that from that injury on that leg god is so good it didn't because it wasn't meant to be your girl was meant to be walking and all of that so i thank god of the universe for that but guys after all is said and done that wasn't that wasn't all the ordeal that I went through when it comes to that situation because when I got home I was on meds I stayed home for like six months or something from school from all of that thank God I had my my aunt was a teacher at my primary school so she would come in and assist me with my work and um, the principal everybody came on board because everybody heard of what transpired they came looking for me everybody come uh, guys I, I can't say anything other than everybody just came together and just looked out for my best interests, for my family best interests and all of that. And the ordeal of getting to the health center and every day or every every other day and so I, have, I would have to go and get checked and get cleaned and all of that to make sure there was no infection. And lo and behold of course i got an infection which gave me some bad fever i don't know what it's called which guys it was horrible when i tell you horrible i could not walk i i literally had to be taught how to use my leg again because it was that bad that we didn't have a vehicle of our own and my neighbor i mean he was a he was a working man and you know my my village is not like at that time they had a whole ton of transportation just passing by day and like every hour of the day no there was transportation but um they travel at a certain time of the day you know so it was kind it was it was challenging to get back and forth to the health center from my village to go to the upper part of the village and um i remember guys my mom oh i'm getting all chilled right now my mom guys would literally put me on her back lift me up on her back and carry me all the way up to that upper village upper penville health center to get my leg checked and take me back home majority of the times we get a little lift sometimes to go back or to back and forth it depends but there are days that you know a few days that we would there was no vehicle at that time and i remember my mom would literally carry me on her back make sure that i get myself checked again my dad would leave home very very early in the mornings so there is no way he could have you know because i mean my, my at that time my dad was the breadwinner and my dad is in his 70s and my dad is still working still working i'm the last of five children so you could imagine my dad has been at it and is still at it so I am just so grateful for my parents, for my family, for the neighbors, for the entire village, villages. Because like I said, everybody from even the, the, the one where I say De Galba and other, yeah, Upper Penville, everybody came looking for me, you know, checking on me and all of that. I, re I remember, I can recall that my, my, my mom told me that my, my dad and my brothers were so upset with the parents that the situ that the child the the, the one who shoved me I, I don't remember honestly i don't i mean children will be children so i won't even say shoved me and probably even if she did it wasn't intentional we were just children having fun so this story time is just to say that you know it's not every it's not everything we have to get ignorant about and we have to look into things before you know we get out of hand and try to um you know do things that 
probably could not you, you cannot erase because i was told that my 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 brothers and my dad went at the people in home and it was a whole commotion i'm so grateful and thankful that it didn't get out of hand it didn't get physical or anything like that i'm grateful to god for that and um yeah guys so you know if you're a parent if you're an aunt an uncle whatever you might be brother or sister or grandparent whatever the case is you know violence is not the way to go you know or trying to fix something with violence you know at the end of the day children will be children i'm not gonna say they're they're not children who's out there who's intentionally trying to hurt others but in my case that was not the point we were just trying to have fun i do hope you guys enjoyed this story time i hope i didn't gross you out that much you know and um yeah again let us be grateful for health or mobility for you know vision or hearing thanking god for you know figure of speech you know using our hands you know that we can smell we can laugh we can express ourselves we can because there are some people guys who can't help themselves there are some people who are going through so much traumatic things that some things happen to them that they could never come back from it you know so let us all just remember to be kind to look out for each other so with that being said thank you so much for stopping by blessings more life cheers <laughs>